everyone. Welcome to Intro to Philosophy Spring 2020 at UIC Aiken. My name is Tom Burris and I'm the professor of this class. And what I want to do in this video is give you an introduction to the way this class is going to work, some of the assignments, and try and make things as clear as possible. So first of all, as I already said up on Blackboard today, the syllabus is available under course content. Please do take a look at that because I'm going to be referencing that uh, as I can First of all, if you look at the course description of the syllabus, what this class is, it's an introduction to the main problems of philosophy and its methods of inquiry, analysis, and criticism, including an introduction to the history theories and methods of reasoning. Um, that's what it is. So this is an introduction to philosophy. I know philosophy is one of those disciplines where sometimes people can't quite define it. Philosophy is like, it's like college, right? Well, not exactly. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to be looking at the, sort of the history of philosophy is really the way I structure my intro cor courses. We're going to kind of start in the ancient world and work our way forward to the contemporary world to see what uh, philosophy is. And over the course of that inquiry for this class, uh, works of important philosophers uh, shall be read, uh, including arguments uh, about various subject matters within philosophy. These words won't probably mean anything to you right now, but including things like epistemology, uh, that's the study of no how we know what we know, study of knowledge, metaphysics, what is reality, history of philosophy, this person lived, and this person lived, and this person lived, philosophy of science, science, what is it, philosophy of religion, religion, what's that? Um, and as the syllabus continues to develop, we'll be looking at multiple cu cultures, multiple time periods, uh, kind of all over. But the way that I do the course, at least at the beginning, is to kind of start from ancient Greece, uh, which is when which is where most philosophers kind of start in their, their history of philosophy. There's, there's some um, problems with that as philosophy has developed in other cultures and sometimes those are more or less ignored. Um, but I'll try and incorporate those over the course of the semester as well. So last semester here at USC Aiken, I had a course in Eastern philosophy and it was great. Uh, I'll go a little bit into that, but your textbooks aren't really gonna cover it uh, because you'll notice the textbooks are Western philosophy. Um, because that's the way that most textbooks are manufactured for philosophy as it just so happens. I will be putting up some additional content in Blackboard too. But basically the way this course is going to work is you're going to primarily be doing two things for most of your enrichment and edification. Uh, one, you're going to be looking at, well, I really should say listening to lectures in Blackboard. These were things I recorded in spring 2019, uh, going over this stuff in an in-person class. Um, so you'll be listening to those lectures. There are 36 of them, uh, each 50 minutes or fewer. And so, I mean, you can you can listen to these either in Blackboard right now. They're under the assignments tab under lecture audio. You can either listen to them in Blackboard or you can download the MP3s and listen to them on your phone or, or what have you. You can really play them on any device. And you can sometimes, if you have the right... Uh, applications, be they Android or Apple, you can play them at a higher speed too. Uh, sometimes, since these are mainly, the, the microphone is from my phone, uh, and it was mainly where I was at a lectern, sometimes what students say, are, it's a little bit harder to hear, so turn your headphones up. Uh, I recommend listening to them on headphones personally and turning up the volume. I don't think I ever quite boom too loudly. But that's one of the things that you'll have to do. Another thing that you'll have to do is read out of the required textbook. Now, I'll qualify that by saying this. Most of the texts that we're going to read are available in other translations, perhaps, sometimes the same translation in the public domain. Uh, when that's the case, where it's in the public domain, I'll, I'll probably put the stuff up on uh, Blackboard as well in, in PDF format. The issue there is pagination is going to be different, translations are going to be different, but to make things as available for you as possible, uh, I'm going to attempt to facilitate that. Some of, some of the stuff you can find on your own, uh, some of it I'll put up on Blackboard. Like I said, the translations will sometimes be different, the pagination will sometimes be different, but the required text of the course is this one. Uh, Stephen Kahn's, uh, that's the editor, uh, Classics of Western Philosophy, 8th edition. I don't know how much they charge for in the bookstore, but it, it's, it's a compendium of a lot of things that are fairly available otherwise. So. We'll work together at looking, but this is, we'll, look, we'll work together on trying to do some things that are more convenient, but this is the most optimal thing for this course is to have this book because it's all just right there. Every, every passage that I'm going to refer to, uh, with the exception of maybe a few things on Eastern philosophy, 
is right here. The other book that I recommend is, this one's heavier, is Anthony Kenny's uh, A New History of Western Philosophy. So this is the single volume version of this book. There's actually a four volume version of this instead, uh, where it's slimmer volume. So basically this is just taking all four and sticking them into one big volume. Whichever one's cheaper, this is not required, but I think this will help facilitate one's understanding for this course. This, this book is really helpful if you're wanting to get the most out of this course, but this one I'm not requiring. This one I'm requiring you to read the stuff in here, but not necessarily that you have to purchase the book itself. Now, in spite of whether you purchase the book or whether you look at things online, I'm asking you to look at the things online as we go through them. So I'm, I'm going to say, here's the things I'm referring to. Uh, it'd probably be best to read them before and as I go over and then go back and read things again. I think that's the, the best way to get stuff out of this course. Uh, but I understand that we're all we're all very busy and have other things going on and other courses as well. So do as much as you can. I'm not looking for anyone in here to have them. If you look at the learning objectives of the course, there's some things that I want you to do uh, that you'll see on page two of your syllabus. Recall and identify the major thinkers, schools, core philosophical questions, terms and concepts. This, these are things, these are goals that I want you to do throughout the course. I'm not expecting you to be able to do now. So that, like when I say Plato, you have a general idea of who that is and kind of what his arguments were. Uh, or later in the course, when I say Simone de Beauvoir, you have a general idea of who she is, what movements she represented, and what, what she had to say uh, from, a, from a general perspective. That's what I'm looking for throughout the course. I also want you to be able to interpret, explain core philosophical questions and concepts uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, do, I, uh, do I expect you to understand them completely? No. Do I want you to be able to talk about them in some semblance that you at least kind of understand what's going on? Yeah. Um, third goal, outcome of this class, is to apply this stuff that we're going to learn about to today. All right, this ancient philosopher said this about democracy. What does that mean to us now? Does it have any bearing? Yeah. Um, compare and contrast related core philosophical questions and concepts. All right, Plato said this, but Karl Marx says this, but Judith Butler says that. Okay, how are these things different? Are they talking about the same thing or are they not? A lot of discourse that happens on the internet today, today involves a lot of category mistakes where people are talking about different things and are talking over each other. And then finally, I want you to be able to justify a sound position on a topic, philosophically speaking. And this just means, and this will happen mainly in your papers, if you're going to say something, back it up. And I'll explain what that looks like when we're talking about assignments. So let's talk about assignments. So first of all, there are five major assignments for this class, and they are as follows. You have three weekly analyses that you're going to do. Um, and you're going to have a midterm exam and you're going to have a final exam. Now the exams are each worth 35% of your grade and the weekly analyses are each worth 10% uh, of your grade. So altogether that's going to add up uh, to 100%. And the way that these are going to work is basically one of these weekly analyses is going to be due at the end of February, one's going to be due at the end of March, and one's going to be due at the end of April. Each one of these is going to be two to three pages, at least two complete whole pages, uh, 12 point times New Roman double spaced. Okay, and there's actually already, the assignments are already there. There's already the little drop boxes for them in Blackboard. They're already there. Um, the only thing that you really have to do is just, these are the way the weekly analyses work, is in at least two pages. In at least two pages, talk about something that we talked about in your own words. This is not a research paper. I do not want you to simply copy and paste from Wikipedia. I want you to simply talk about in your own words something that was discussed in class that you found interesting. Now, it says about a week's worth of material. You don't need to do necessarily a week's worth of material. Um, it could be Plato said this, and I thought this was interesting. But give me your view on it. Now, back up what you're going to say. If you're going to make some kind of assertion, like, I think Plato was wrong on this, don't just leave that hanging. Think of yourself. Uh, being in like a courtroom. And if you're trying to present something in a court case, uh, I think my client was not guilty. The defense rests, Your Honor. Your client's now probably going to prison. So think of when you're wanting to say something, back up what you're saying with evidence. So here in this class, I want you to try that out. So this will be, some of this will be trial and error. I'm not expecting anybody to nail it on the first assignment. But I will say this, if you look at that weekly analysis one, so you go to the assignments tab, and you look under weekly analyses, you'll see weekly analysis one, two, and three are all there. And underneath weekly analysis one, there's three documents there. One is a formatting exemplar. 
that shows you exactly what the formatting should look like. One is an example of a good weekly analysis. It says, weekly. I think, paper good. Take a look at that one for kind of what I'm looking for in a weekly analysis. Another one says, uh, paper bad, which is an example of, it's not a terrible weekly analysis, um, but it's one that's kind of meh, it's a C paper. So that's that's one that's kind of, it's, it's decent, but it's not optimal. So take a look at those to see what kind of things I'm looking for in a weekly analysis. Please don't simply copy it, but take a look at it to see what's there. Uh, the other two, those are three of your assignments right there, each worth 10% of your grade for a total, for all three of them put together, 30%. The other uh, two grades are the midterm and the final. The way those will work is this way. Uh, the midterm will be half of it, or roughly half of it will be objective content, and the other half of it, not exactly half of it, we'll say like a third will be essay, and two thirds of it will be objective content. Multiple choice, fill in the blank questions. That will come from the lectures, and the lectures are themselves supplied by some stuff called Microsoft Sways. So if you look under the Assignments tab, you'll see a folder that says Sways. Those are, Sways are kind of like PowerPoint, except I find them less annoying. Now you have to use the internet to access them, but basically whatever device you're looking at them on, if you're looking at it on a computer, if you're looking at it on uh, your phone, if you're looking at it on a tablet, it optimizes to whatever your device you're on, and I think it's much easier uh, to navigate through than PowerPoint's like personally. Uh, all objective questions will come either directly from the lecture audio or from those sways, and really it's kind of both. Pretty much everything that I'm talking about in the lectures comes from the sways. So most of your assignments throughout the semester, I'll say, read this stuff, listen to these lectures, look at these sways, okay? Or look at these presentations. And so the objective content will always come from the sways and from the audio. Uh, the essay questions require a, are, are going to be are going to work like this. Usually, for say the midterm and the final, the format is the same for both of them. They're just the midterm will probably be done about mid March. The uh, final will be done about late April, early May. I don't have concrete dates yet. I kind of want to see how it goes before I make those dates concrete. But the essay questions, I'll put them up. There, actually, I'll probably go ahead and put them up this week so you can kind of know what, to looking for, what you're looking for. And when we get to the exam, you'll, you can write them up beforehand. You don't have to do it uh, immediately. But there'll basically be two, there'll be six to eight questions for you to choose from. You will, you will select two. All six to eight will be available. You will select two and write on them, and you will do this uh, in Blackboard. Also, the objective content for the exams you'll do in Blackboard well as well. In an application there probably about 25 questions on the midterm and the final and before we get to that I'll give some sample questions for here's the kind of questions that I'm looking for I'll put that up on blackboard as well so you know what to expect but basically uh, on the objective content it'll be 25 questions I'll probably give you like 60 minutes to do the 25 questions which I think is more than fair uh, and of course you'll have access to all the resources while you do that if you want to pull up the audio you'll have the books available you'll have the Microsoft Sways available as well while you do that. Uh, so that's the way those assignments are going to look. And that's, that's, that's all the assignments for this class. Now, I will have some places available on in Blackboard. I'll have the discussion board kind of open and I'll put some threads there where you can ask some questions if you have, have them. And that's a place where we can kind of work on stuff. So if you're struggling with something, I don't get what Aristotle said about this. There'll be a, a forum for, for that. It won't be incorporated into the grading as such. But if I can see that you're participating and you're still struggling with something, I'm more apt to be a little bit more, we'll just say lenient there, okay? Uh, especially if you, oh, I didn't realize this assignment was due. Uh, I'm pretty strict about that, but if I can see that, hey, this person's participating, I'm gonna do everything that I can to help and facilitate you. And that's another thing I wanna say too, is that um, I am here to basically curate uh, and guide you through content. So think of me not as your enemy, but as your friend. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to show you uh, what we'll be studying. So what I want you to do is simply do all the work. And if you need help with anything, come to me. Uh, the syllabus dictates that I'll be here Monday at 11 a.m. I'm in, I'm in my office right now. HSS 206B. Um, if you see me in here and you want to ask a question, doesn't have to. You can be by. You, you can set up an appointment. You can come by Monday is at 11 a.m. I should be in here. If you see me in here at another time feel free to knock on the door and just come on in. Uh, furthermore, my email is thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S-B, at usca.edu. If you have questions, you can email me that way as well. 
so I think that about concludes what I want to say right now. I, I'll probably throughout the semester I'll do a couple more things where I do little videos like this where I uh, explain what's going on. I've, I've done this on the online version of this course now uh, for years, so this, this should be pretty streamlined at this point. But I'll do a couple more videos I think throughout the semester to just kind of say where we are, where we're going, and how to explain how to do things. Like I said, questions, please email me. I'll probably put a little um, thread in the discussion board with people in Blackboard where people can ask questions too. I hope you have a good start to your spring 2020 semester, and I look forward to working with you all um, starting today. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.